Hello everyone. Welcome to Limit State Design of Steel Structures. In today's lecture, I will be discussing about the design procedure for bearing type bolt joints. So as per clause 10.3.3 of IS 800-2007, the nominal shear capacity of a bolt is given by VNSB equal to FUB divided by under root 3 NN ANB plus NS ASB where VNSB is the nominal shear capacity of the bolt that is nominal shear capacity of a bolt and FUB is the ultimate tensile strength of a bolt and NN is the number of shear planes with threads of the bolt intercepting the shear plane. And NS is the number of shear planes without thread is intercepting the shear plane. For example, we have a bolt joint as shown in figure. And in this case, we have the threaded portion of the bolt up to this level. That is, the thread is in the bolt run from this leg location up to this location. And we have three shear planes, that is, one shear plane is this, one shear plane is this, and one shear plane is this. That is, the number of shear planes that are included in the threaded portion is 1 because the threaded portion terminates here and after this portion we have plane shank so here nn is 1 that is number of shear planes that intercepts the threaded portion of the bolt is 1 and we have two planes that are outside the threaded portion that is we have ns equal to 2 and nn equal to 1 Further we have A S B that is cross sectional area area of the plane shank of the bolt that is it is the cross sectional area of the bolt with without threads that is cross section area of the unthreaded portion of the bolt. Then we have A and B that is cross sectional area of the threaded portion of the bolt. It is also called as net stress area of the bolt and it may be taken as the area corresponding to the root diameter at the threads. For example, we have a bolt having threads like this.
this is the third portion of the bolt and this is called the, as the root of the thread that is this is called root of the thread and the area corresponding to this or this is called as the net stress area and this a and b is given as 0 0.78 times pi by 4 d square where d is the nominal diameter of the bolt and a s b is the cross section area of the shank of the bolt that will be given by pi by 4 d square where d is the nominal diameter of the bolt now actually if we apply a shear force or a load to a bolt that load or that shear load rather will be resisted by the cross sectional area of the bolt for example we have a We have bolt like this. And this bolt is connecting two palettes. And if we apply load in this fashion, the cross sectional area of this bolt will be subjected to shear at this location that is at the shear plane at the location of shear plane so actually this cross sectional area of the bolt will be subjected to shear and the cross sectional area of the bolt has to resist to this applied load that is if we cut a section at this point we will have the cross section area of the bolt like this where d is its diameter so the area of this cross sectional cross section rather will be resisting the applied load so if we reduce this cross sectional area the resistance to the applied load will be lowered that's why in the case of thread portion of the bolt if the shear plane lies in that thread portion of the bolt the net cross sectional area gets reduced so uh, the chances of shear failure at that location or enhance it now we have some reduction factors that have to be applied to the shear capacity of the bolt further the design shear strength of bolt is denoted by VDSB that is design shear strength of the bolt and that will be given by nominal shear capacity of the bolt that is VNSB divided by some factor of safety that is the factor of safety for material of the bolt that is gamma MB where gamma MB is the partial safety factor for material of the boot and this gamma mb is given in table 5 of is 800-2007 now actually we have to apply some reduction factors to the shear capacity of the bolt and those reduction factors are beta lj 
beta l g and beta p k that is beta l g is the reduction factor for long jointers beta l g is the reduction factor for uh, large grip length and beta p k is the reduction factor for uh, packing material so as per colors 10.3.3.1 the reduction factor for long jointers that is beta lj that is reduction factor for long jointers which is beta lj is given as beta l j equal to 1.075 minus l j divided by 200t and the code states that when the length of the joint that is the distance between the first row of bolts and the last row of rather vertical row of bolts in the joint exceeds 15d in the direction of the load then nominal shear capacity shall be reduced by the factor beta lj so if lj is greater than 15 times d where d is the nominal diameter of the bolt then the reduction factor is given as beta lj Lj is equal to 1.075 minus Lj where Lj is the length of the joint divided by 200 times D. So you can further write it as 1.075 minus 0.005 Lj divided by D. And the code further says that the value of this beta LG should be less or equal to 1 but it should be greater or equal to 0 0.75. Now we have a reduction factor for for large grip length as per clause 10.3.3.2 when the grip length its lg which is equal to the total thickness of the connector plate exceeds five times the diameter d of the bolts the design shear capacity shall be reduced by a factor beta lg that is if lg that is length of the grip is greater than 5d where d is the nominal diameter of the boat then beta lg that is reduction factor for large large grip length that is given by 8d divided by 3d plus lg where lg is the length of the grip the code further says that beta lg should not be more than beta lj that is reduction factor for grip length should not be more than the reduction factor for uh, long joint further the grip length lg should not be more than 8 times t where t is the diameter of the boat then we have reduction factor for packing plates the clause 10.3.3.3 says the design shear capacity of bolts carrying shear through a picking pallet of thickness 
in excess of 6 mm shall be reduced by a factor beta pk and the value of beta pk is given by beta pk that is reduction factor for packing plate is given by 1 minus 0 0.0125 tpk where tpk is the thickness of the packing plate For example, we have to connect two plates or two members which have different thicknesses. For example, let us take two plates or two members having varying thicknesses or different thicknesses and we want to join them through double curved joint. Let us provide one plate over here and one plate over here. So in order to connect these two plates through bolts, we have to provide a packing plate so that the thicknesses become equal or so that the two cover palettes can be arranged in such a manner that the bolting is possible so let us provide two bolts like this and this is called packing palette Now we have the bearing strength of the bolt. That is in order to design a bolt joint, we have to chuck it for shear as well as for bearing. So the bearing strength of bolt. As per clause 10.3.4 the nominal bearing strength of the bolt that is V and P B is given by 2.5 K B into D into T and to F U where V and P B is the nominal bearing strength of the boot and FU is the ultimate tensile strength of palate and D is the nominal a dia of bolt and T is the summation of thicknesses of the connected palates. That is, it is the total. thickness of the connected palettes and the term KB is taken as least of the values that is E divided by 3 dH and P divided by 3 dH minus 0 0.25 FUB divided by FU and 1 so we have to take the value of KB as the least from these values where D0 or DH is the diameter of bolt hole and E is 
end distance of the bolt or of the fastener along the bearing direction and P is the pitch distance and F U B is the ultimate tensile stress of bolt so the design bearing strength of a bolt on any palette is given by V D P B and that will be equal to V N P B that is nominal bearing strength of the bolt divided by factor of safety or partial factor of safety and this gamma mb is taken as 1.25 from table 5 of is 800-2007 then we have the tension capacity of bolt Let's we have to check the bolts for tension capacity. And as per clause 10.3.5 of IS 800-2007, the nominal tensile capacity of a bolt in tension is given by TNB equal to 0.9 FUB into AS to draw the A and B, A and B, and it should be less than F Y B into A S B gamma M B divided by gamma M zero, where F U B is the ultimate tensile stress of the bolt. and FYB is the yield stress of the bolt and ASB is the cross sectional area of the shank of the bolt or you may say it is the shank area of the bolt and TNB is actually the nominal tensile capacity of a bolt in tension and we have gamma m0 that is the partial safety factor for material resistance governed by yielding and the value of gamma m0 is taken as 1.1 from table 5 of is 800 and the value of comma mb is taken as 1.25 from the same table so the design tensile strength of 
of the gold that is T D B is taken as T N B divided by comma M B that is nominal tensile capacity of the bolt divided by the factor of safety for material of the bolt. Then we have to check the joint for tension capacity of the plate as well. So the fourth is tension capacity of plate. So as per clause six point three point one, which says the design strength in tension of a plate as governed by rupture of net cross sectional area AN at the location of holes is given by TDN equal to 0.9 FU AN divided by gamma M1. So when a plate or a structural member is subjected to tensile forces and the plates are joined by bolts or rivets so we have to actually punch holes through the plates in order to connect them through bolts or through rivets so when we punch holes so at a particular location the net cross sectional area of the plate gets reduced so in comparison to solid plate, the tensile strength of the plate at the location of the holes which have been drilled for the insertion of bolts or rivets is reduced. So we have the design strength in tension of the plate given as 0 0.9 times Fu into An divided by gamma M1 where Fu is the ultimate tensile stress or strength of the plate and An is the net effective cross sectional area of the plate. This cross AN is actually the reduced cross sectional area due to punching of holes in the plate. And we have gamma M1 as the partial safety factor for resistance governed by ultimate tensile stress so net effective cross section area of a palette an is given as b minus n d h multiplied by t that is thickness of the palette and this is applicable for chain riveting or chain bolting for chain bolting or chain riveting that is if we have a cross sectional area of palette as B into T and after the insertion of the holes the net cross sectional area will be like this
so due to insertion of holes for the bolts we have the reduction in the cross sectional area let us say this is let us say this is the thickness of the pallet t and this is the width of the pallet that is b and let us say we have n number of holes in the pallet in this case for example we have three holes so so net width will be equal to b minus 3 times d where d is the diameter of the hole actually this diameter is the projected portion of this hole so we have b, uh, for general case the net cross section area will be b minus n times that is n, where n is the number of ro uh, holes and dh is the diameter of the bolt to hole multiplied by t that is thickness of the pallet and this is applicable for chain riveting or chain bolting and for stagger bolting we have net cross sectional area n equal to b minus n dh plus summation of i running from 1 to m si square divided by 4 g i where s i is the rather s is the stagger pitch and g is the stagger gauge and for solid plate the cross sectional area rather the net cross sectional area will be equal to b multiplied by t for solid plate and for the plate in which holes have been punctured let us say n holes we will get cross sectional area is b minus n times dh into t and for this for staggered bolting or staggered riveting then we have bolts subjected to combined shear and tension and that is if the bolts in a joint are subjected to tension as well as shear we have to apply an interaction formula and that interaction formula has to be less or equal to 1 and as per the as per clause 10.3.6 a bolt required to resist bo uh, both design shear force and design tensile force at the same time shall satisfy the for interaction formula that is vsb over vdp whole square plus T B over T D P whole square and this should be less or equal to 1. This interaction formula is actually used to check the safety of the connection when the bolt is subjected to both shear as well as tension and where V S B is the factored shear force acting on the bolt and VDB is the design shear capacity of the bolt and TB is the factor tensile force acting on the bolt and TDB is the design tension capacity of the bolt so we have to check 
a joint or rather a boot joint for these different cases in order that the joint is safe so this was all regarding the procedure for the design of bolted jointers rather for bearing type bolted jointers thank you